In this video, you're going to learn how to solve exponential equations. We're going to go through 10 examples together, each problem a little bit different, and we're going to go through a number of different types. So let's dive into this first problem. We've got 4 to the x power equals 16. Now, when we're talking about exponential equations, what exactly makes it an exponential equation is that you have that variable up in the exponent position, that power position. And so what we need to do here in this particular problem is recognize that if we get both of the bases the same, then we can set the powers or the exponents equal to one another. So for example, here I recognize that 16 is four to the second power. On the left side, I have four to the x power. If these bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. x is equal to two. That's oftentimes referred to as the one-to-one -one property of exponents. Now let's look at number two. This one's a little bit different. We have nine to the two x minus one power equals the square root of 27. Again, we can try to get those bases to be the same and then set the exponents equal to each other. But what would be a common base for both of these? Well, it looks like three would work. We could say three to the second power is equal to nine. And for 27, that's three to the third power. But the square root, when you see that radical there, that's actually gonna be the one half power. If this was the cube root, it'd be the one third power. Now, when we have an exponent raised to another exponent, sometimes referred to as a power to a power, what do we do to those exponents? We multiply them together, so here, I'm going to distribute, I get 3 to the 4x minus 2, and then here we've got 3 to the 3 halves power. Okay, now we've got the same base, they're both base 3, we can set those exponents equal to each other and solve. So let's do that, 4x minus 2 equals 3 halves. Let's add 2 to both sides. Of course, 2 is like 2 over 1. And this will give us 4 over 2 plus 3 over 2, which is equal to 7 over 2. And then we want to solve just for 1x. So instead of multiplying by 4, we can divide by 4 or multiply by the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply by 1 fourth. So that gives us x equals 7 eighths. And you got it. Let's take a look at number 3. Now this one's a little bit different because... We can't get the bases to be the same like we did in example number one and number two. So how do we get that variable down from that exponent position so we can isolate it and solve for x? Well, this is our natural base e, which remember that's a Euler's number, it's about 2.7 roughly. But what you want to be able to do is switch between the exponential form and the logarithmic form. You may have learned these formulas previously in math, log base b of x equals n, and then in exponential form, it's b to the nth power equals x. So you have the same base. See, this is log base b. This is exponential uh, function base b. We're just interchanging the x and the n. So that's one way to switch forms. Another way to think about this is, if this is base e, we can take the natural log of both sides of this equation. Now, natural log, ln, that's really the same as the log base e. So if you want to just put a little subscript e there to remind yourself that that's the base. And exponential functions and logarithmic functions, they're inverses of one another, meaning they undo each other, kind of like multiplying and dividing or adding or and subtracting or squaring and square rooting. So that'll undo one another. We'll be left with x, which is our variable, is equal to natural log of five. Again, you can write the base e if you want. You don't have to. That's an exact answer. If we want to get an approximation, we can go to our calculator Natural log of 5, I'm getting approximately 1.61. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Okay, for number 4, we have 3 times 4 to the x power equals 81. Again, we're solving for x. In this problem, we can think about working from the outside in, trying to isolate this exponential function right here, 4 to the x. So instead of multiplying by 3, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3. That's going to give us 27 on the right, 4 to the x power on the left. Now again, we need to get that variable down from the exponent position so we can isolate it and solve for x. 
So again, we can think about, hmm, four to the x power. The inverse of that would be to take the log base four of both sides. So we could write this as log base four of four to the x power equals log base four of 27. Now this is just one way to do it. I like this method because it's a kind of intuitive. You think of, oh, exponential function, logarithmic function. As long as the bases are the same, they're inverses, they undo each other. And so we can see here now we have x by itself equals log base four of 27. Now that's an exact answer. A lot of calculators have the ability to uh, do log base four. You can use a ch uh, change of base formula, which is this formula right here. In case you don't have the ability to change the base, you could use like log base 10 or natural log. So I'll show you that just in case. So you could say log base 10 Okay, so you're picking a new base, that's a change of base. And it's easy to remember, the 27 is a little bit higher, that goes in the numerator, four is a little bit lower, that goes in the denominator. That's not a proof, that's just an easy way to remember it. And you don't wanna do log of 27 fourths, you wanna make sure you do log of 27 divided by log of four. You could also do natural log of 27 divided by uh, natural log of four. And this again is if you wanna get an approximate answer. This is an exact. Okay, so we're going to go to the calculator. Let's see what that is. So math, uh, let's see here. Okay, 4, 27. Okay, I'm getting approximately 2.38. Okay, so if you're looking for a decimal approximation. And again, you can check your answer by putting it back into the original problem, and you should get approximately 81. It's going to be a little bit off because we rounded here. Let's go to number 5. Now, this one's a little bit different. You can see that we've got an exponent here, we have an exponent here. How are we gonna isolate or solve for x? Well, this kind of looks like a quadratic equation, like a, a type of equation that we used to factor, remember in algebra one? Same idea here, we can factor it into two binomials. We can say e to the x power times e to the x power. When you multiply and you have the same ba base, you add the exponent, so x plus one I'm sorry, x plus x is 2x. But then you want to ask yourself, what two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add to this middle coefficient negative 1? That's going to be negative 4 and positive 3. And you can see, if you FOIL this out, you're going to get back the original. Now that we have it factored, we can use what's called our zero product property to solve for x. We can set each of these factors, each of these groups, equal to 0 and solve. So let's go ahead and do that. e to the x minus 4 equals 0 and e to the x plus three equals zero. Here I'm gonna add four to both sides. Here I'm gonna subtract three from both sides. And we're gonna use that same technique we did in an earlier problem. We're gonna take the natural log of both sides. So if I take the natural log here, remember that's log base e, the natural log here, these are inverses and I'm getting x equals natural log of four. Now here if I take the natural log of both sides, I'm taking the natural log of negative three. Now you can't take the log or the natural log of zero or a negative number, that's just undefined. So in this case, this would be like an extraneous solution, extraneous root, and we're gonna throw that one out. So an exact answer would be x is equal to natural log of four. Again, we can get a decimal approximation if we wanna to go to our calculators here. It's about 1.39. Okay, let's take a look at example number six. Now this one is very similar to the previous one. I wanted to give you some extra practice with this type because it's a little bit challenging for some students. See if you can do this one now knowing what you know about that factoring technique. If I was gonna do it though, again, I would say to myself, hmm, what two numbers multiply to six but add to negative five? Well, that's gonna be negative three times negative two gives us positive six but negative three e to the x and negative two e to the x gives us this middle term, negative five e to the x. And again, when we multiply here and we have the same base, we add the exponents, which is giving us the e to the two x. Now that we have it factored, we can set these groups or these factors equal to zero. Add three to both sides, add two to both sides, Take the natural log of both sides. Remember that's log base e, these are inverses. So x equals natural log of three is one of our solutions. Here, take the natural log of both sides. x equals 
natural log of 2. So in this example, we got two answers. This example, we only got one because one of the solutions was extraneous. Let's take a look at a few more examples. Okay, if you want to try number 7, go ahead and solve this problem. While you're doing that, I wanted to mention that if you've been watching my videos for a while and you like the way that I explain things, and you want to go deeper into the concepts covered in Algebra 2 or in College Algebra, check out the video course link that I have in the description below. I go through a typical Algebra 2 slash College Algebra class going over concepts similar to these, uh, as well as the other concepts covered in those courses, and I take you step by step to help build on each previous concept to take you through that course. So it's a great resource. It has about 85 to 87 videos in it, and uh, it's definitely worth your while. So check that out. And let's continue with number seven. <clears throat> so this one, what I would do is I would multiply both sides by this denominator, one minus e to the negative x. So I multiply the left side and the right side to keep it balanced. These are going to cancel one another out. So we're left with four equals six minus six times e to the negative x. Okay, again, we're working from the outside in towards this variable, right? So instead of this 6 here, let's go ahead and eliminate it by doing the opposite, subtracting 6 from both sides. Okay, again, still working from the outside in towards that variable x. We're going to divide both sides by negative 6. So e to the negative x is equal to 1 third. And now we're back to... A similar problem that we talked about where we have that variable in the exponent position, it's base e. We're going to take the natural log, which is like log base e, of both sides of this equation. These are inverses. They undo one another, so we're left with negative x equals the natural log of one-third. We can multiply both sides by negative one, so x is equal to negative natural log of one-third. And if you've learned a little bit about logarithms, uh, so far, what you can think about is this is like a negative 1. We can use the power property of logarithms to bring that up as a, an exponent. You can think of this as natural log of 1 third to the negative 1. What do negative exponents tell us? They tell us to take the reciprocal, so this is really like the natural log of 3. And that's an exact answer for this problem. Now, if you want to get a decimal approximation, let's go to the calculator. I'm getting about one point. One zero, and you got it. Let's take a look at number eight. A, a different problem here. We have the compounding continuously formula. Notice a equals p, which is like our principal, what we put in. Our natural base e, about 2.7, Euler's number, raised to the r times t power. r is the interest rate as a decimal. t is the time generally in years. And we're trying to figure out $100, if it's compounded continuously at a 4% interest rate, how much time does it take to double to become twice as much? So what we can think here is, okay, P is our principal, that's 100. A is what we end up with, which is going to be 200 since it's doubling. E is our natural base E. 4%, you want to move that decimal two places to the left, which is going to make this 0 0.04 times T. Now, T is the variable we're trying to solve for the time, right? So again, working from the outside in here, instead of multiplying by 100, I'm going to divide both sides by 100. That gives us 2 equals e to the 0 0.04t. Again, we've got this natural base e, so let's go ahead and take the natural log. Again, I like to sometimes put that subscript base e there to remind me that these are inverses, logarithms and exponential functions if they have the same base, leaving us with 0 0.04 times t equals the natural log of 2. All we have to do now, instead of multiplying by 0.04, is to divide both sides by 0.04. And now let's go ahead and calculate approximately what the time is going to be here. Natural log of 2 uh, divided by 0.04 is 17 point, I'm going to round, 3 years. Okay, let's take a look at two more examples. Okay, for number 9 now, we're working with another uh, common formula here, the compound interest formula, but now instead of compounding continuously, we're compounding like daily or weekly or monthly or quarterly. In this problem, we're trying to figure out how long would it take for $200 to triple and become $600. If you're compounding four times per year, that's quarterly, 
at an interest rate of 10%. So let's go ahead and figure out that, what that is. So A is what we end up with, that's the $600. P is our principal or what we put in to our investment, that's $200. The interest rate, remember we wanna move that decimal two places to the left, so that's gonna be 0 0.10. N is the number of times we compound in a year, which is four. And this N and this N are the same. So if this is four, this will be four times T. And T is what we're solving for, the time to triple. So if I was solving for this variable T, I'd think about working from the outside in. I'm gonna get rid of this 200 first by dividing both sides by 200. So that's gonna give us three equals one plus 0 0.10 over four to the four T power. Let me see what this quantity is here in the parentheses. So we have 0 0.10 divided by four plus one. That's 1.025 to the four times T power is equal to three. Now we're trying to get that variable down from the exponent position so we can isolate and solve for t, right? So if this is an exponential function with base 1.025, how about if we take the log base 1.025 of both sides of this equation to keep it balanced? These are inverses giving us 4t Let's see what this comes out on, to on the calculator. Well, actually, we'll do that at the end. So I'm going to get an exact answer. Log base 1.025 of 3, divide both sides by 4. Don't just divide the 3 by 4. That's a common mistake. You want to divide the whole thing by 4. And this is an exact answer for the time. Now, let's get an approximation here. Let's see. Log base 1.025 of 3, divided by 4. So it's approximately 11.12 years, and you got it. Okay, last problem. This is an interesting one because the bases are not the same. Remember at the very beginning of the video, we said if we get the bases the same, we can set the exponents equal. And we can see we have a variable on both sides uh, of the equation here in the exponent position. So how are we gonna solve this problem? Well, this one's one of the more challenging ones in this uh, video. What you wanna do is you want to, or one way I should say to do it, is to take the log base three of both sides of this equation, because the log base three, exponential function base three, those are inverses. We've got that x there down from the exponent position so we can get it by itself. The only issue here, if you want to call it that, <laughs> is that we have this kind of mess left over here. We still have this x plus one in the exponent position, right? But if we know our properties of logarithms, the power property tells us that we can bring this power down in front of the log and multiply it by that log. That's the power property of logarithms. So this is x plus 1 times log base 3 of 4 is equal to x. Let's distribute this log 4 to both of these terms. So this would be x log base 3 of 4. Let's fix that here. Log base 3 of 4 plus 1 times anything is itself. So that's just log base 3 of 4 is equal to x. Now we've got our variable x here. And here, let's get every term that has an x in it on the left side of the equation. So I'm going to subtract x log base 3 of 4 from both sides. And so that's going to give us x minus x log base 3 of 4 is equal to log base 3 of 4. I can factor out the x like a greatest common factor. Okay, so if I factor that x out, I'm left with 1 minus log base 3 of 4 is equal to log base 3 of 4. Now, instead of multiplying by this, let's divide both sides. Okay, and we've got our variable x by itself. So this is an exact answer, but let's go ahead and get an approximation here. So we've got math log base 3 of 4. Okay, divided by the quantity, 1 minus uh, log base 3 of 4. Okay, I'm getting approximately negative 4.82. Uh, and that's the solution. If you want to check your work, you can put it back into the original problem. We rounded, so it would be a little bit off, but the left side and the right side, right side should match. So the next step is to learn about how to solve logarithmic equations. And that's what I talk about in that video right there. So follow me over to that video. We'll start talking about solving log equations. I'll see you there.